Welcome back to another video you guys. Today I've got a pretty cool video uh, that we're going to be doing. I've got the uh, new iPhone 11 Max Pro here um, and uh, what we're going to be doing is I'm, I'm going to show you how I remove the glass on this particular model. It isn't a video that I've done yet so I figured I'd give it a shot. Um, so let's, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is simply turn off the phone and take out the Penelope screws that are in the bottom of the phone. There are two screws located right next to the charging port. Then we'll take a pry tool and insert it near the bottom of the screen where we can slowly pry on the screen until we've separated the bottom. Then I'm going to take a plastic pry tool and slide it up the side. On this particular model it does take a little bit more force than on previous models because the bezel is thicker than uh, say on, like an, on an old iPhone 7 or around there. Once we've done both sides I'm going to do the same at the top and I'm going to carefully separate it and pull the screen gently away. Once I've unstuck it, it should fold out like a book. And there you go, the inside of the uh, new iPhone 11 Pro Max. I'm going to take out the screws for the brackets here. There are plenty of Lego style connectors in this. We'll go ahead and turn it off again and uh, unplug the, uh, the battery. And then we'll disconnect the uh, display cables and the proximity sensor cable from the logic board. And once disconnected, we can simply remove the screen. And then we're going to move to removing the screws from the proximity sensor assembly that includes the ear speaker at the top of the phone. We'll speed through this a little bit. It's a little tricky to lift the, uh, the microphone and the uh, proximity sensor and face ID, but as long as you take your time and you're careful, you should be able to pop these out, no problem. All right, the next thing we need to do is get a heat plate. This will help us in separating the bezel from the back of the display. This heat plate also has suction. And I just realized that I forgot I didn't record that section. Basically, it consisted of taking a set of, of uh, wire cutters and clipping the top and then using alcohol and my pry tool there, I was able to slide and cut under the adhesive you can kind of see where it was tacky. Now using a plastic piece I'm going to carefully cut the adhesive that's holding the digitizer flex cable to the frame. This is extremely tricky it's a super sensitive cable and that's why I'm using plastic because it's kind of hard to tell whether or not you are under the flex cable or on top of the flex cable. In a perfect world you'd be on top of the flex cable uh, but it doesn't always end up that way. That's why I use the plastic just in case as I carefully pry up the, the bezel uh, I can still separate it without tearing it or anything like that. So I take my time here using plenty of isopropyl alcohol and this uh, plastic uh, sheet that ha has a certain amount of forgiveness to it. Using that sheet I should be able to cut through the adhesive and gently uh, working with the heat and, and, uh, and enough of the isopropyl alcohol, lift the frame and carefully pull back uh, the frame to expose the bottom of the display. And if I've done it right, then I'll have nothing else to do. But I may have missed, in this case I did, I got under the, the, the flex cable for the digitizer. But as long as you don't damage it, you'll be fine. I'll carefully separate that away from the frame. 
And there we go. So at this point, some of you might be wondering, why am I removing the glass if it's not broken? Let me tell you a little bit about why I'm doing that. So about a week ago, I was contacted by a postdoctorate uh, from MIT, and he, he wanted to inquire whether or not it was possible to remove the glass and if I could do it. And I told him I could do that for him. He could send it to me, but I was curious as to why he wanted me to remove the glass and, uh, and not put a, a glass or anything back on. And he shared that with me and, he, he, and I asked him and he said I could share as much as I, as much as I can. Now I'm not, uh, his, his field of study, I don't, um, I don't claim to know anything about it, but I found it really interesting and I thought I'd want to share it with you guys. Basically, um, basically what he's doing is um, using this type of display, which an OLED display on the iPhone uh, 11 Pro Max, it, uh, each individual pixel is able to light up itself and it creates a, basically a natural light. And uh, there's a new form of 3D printing that has come out recently where they're able to print with resins and basically uh, using UV light you're able to cure the resin and, and in a very particular manner using, um, using methods like this. But UV light wasn't something that he could use um, in the curing process because he was going to be working with cells. In their photonics lab He's developing a process in which they are going to be able to 3D print um, a variety of things. His main focus is, is being able to 3D print viable, functional human organs. And I was curious as to how he was going to do that with an iPhone screen. And so he, he explained it to me. He showed me uh, some content. So that I could understand it, he, he gave me a link to a video of a channel, um, and I'll and I'll show you what he, he showed me, uh, kind of as in theory what he's doing. All right, so as you can see here, he's got a phone with the pixels that have been uh, lit up in a certain pattern, and here he has some resin that he uh, that's UV cured, or in this case cured by the natural light, and then they insert a platform that goes down and touches. Uh, the, the base and they turn on the program and it runs for a substantial amount of time but printing like this is much quicker as you can see as it slowly lifts out the cured portions you can see the, the formation of the design that they're going for formed looks like it took a, about two and a half hours to print this which is substantially quick if you've ever used a, a high detailed 3d printing method rinse off any extra resin and there you're left with a 3d model In their photonics lab at MIT, they are using high resolution OLED displays so that they can 3D print um, with fine detail because this particular display that Apple has come out with has a very fine uh, resolution. Um, but the, the, uh, the issue that he was running into is that thickness of the glass wasn't giving him the clarity and the precision that he was wanting, so his hope in removing that glass that he's going to be able to uh, get an even finer detail um, in this process. So after watching this, my mind just started going crazy with the different things that could be done uh, you know, with this. And his, his goal is to be able to uh, basically manufacture uh, human organs. So he wants to be able to uh, make hearts, make livers, make any organ that, that you typically need uh, you know, for, for a transplant. One of the issues that the medical industry faces is the reality that uh, donor parts aren't always available and people are on lists for substantially long periods of time. So what if you were able as, as a doctor to go in and take cells from somebody and replicate those cells and literally 3D print 
a new heart, say they needed a heart transplant, and you were able to do the surgery with a manufactured heart using the cells and the DNA from that particular person. Uh, in my mind, maybe this isn't how it is because I'm not an expert, but one of the things that I know about transplants is that uh, there is a, a probability that the new organ that is, that is placed is rejected by the body and they're given medicines that lower their immune system and so that, that it's not constantly attacking the new, uh, basically the, the new organ that's in there. So if you were to receive a heart that was literally made and created from your own cells and DNA, I would think, maybe I'm wrong, but that the body wouldn't reject it as, as much. And, uh, and not only that, you'd be able to um, not have to be on a waiting list. Sure, it may take a, a, a substantial amount of time to manufacture a functional heart, but if we're talking the difference between days or weeks to, to uh, potentially years when you're waiting on these lists, um, it's substantially, I mean, th the possibilities are endless. Most of the techniques used that I've seen to 3D print in this manner use resins that are cured with UV light. The issue with UV light is that it damages cells. And so you can't use UV light if you're trying to create, say, an organ. So the only thing, uh, however, natural light can cure these type of resins as well and it won't damage the cells. And the nice thing about the iPhone 11 Pro Max is that it, ha it, it, it produces that natural light that is able to cure the, uh, the different polymers that he is looking to use in his experiments. And this being a, a larger phone, the surface area there is sufficient enough to, to be able to print most of the organs that are used in, for transplants. And he's also working on a, a similar project at Harvard, and he's asked that in the future I be available if he needs to separate the glass on a Samsung S20. So I look forward to doing that uh, for him in the future, and maybe I'll make a video of it. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get back to the, uh, to the glass separation. So now that we have removed the bezel from the screen, we're going to go ahead and connect the proximity sensor and uh, face ID so that we can get this to device to turn on. We'll connect the screen just to test to make sure we didn't do any damage during the process because removing the bezel is extremely difficult and you can damage the display in doing so. It looks like the display is just fine. We're going to test the touch here. I'm just going to go through all the numbers, make sure they all work. And we'll go ahead and turn it off. Looks good. So we'll commence uh, removing the glass from the display. After warming it up for a bit, I'm going to take a plastic tool and insert it into the corner under the, uh, and I'm going to get it in between the layers uh, of the digitizer and the glass. There's some adhesive there. Using it as a guide, I'm going to allow the wire to get uh, under the digitizer uh, without catching any of it and I'll carefully uh, start to slice back and forth using this thin wire. Uh, this is 0 0.04 millimeter uh, wire so it's very very thin so it's, uh, it can break fairly easily and as you can see the display is moving around substantially. I do have a little trick for this I, that, I, uh, that I use uh, when it moves around too much and that is to take uh, a bit of tape and what I'm going to do is line that on the either side of the display. You can see why I'm struggling. If you look carefully, you'll see that I'm cut, grabbing some of the adhesive and cutting through it. And then I'll take some more tape and I'll tape down that tape to the actual machine so that it, the screen doesn't move at all. This method works great uh, for many different devices. This will allow me to uh, put a little bit more uh, uh, tension on the wire as I move it through but of course it being so thin and this uh, and the OCA on here being so tough that I do end up breaking the wire several times which uh, can be risky but uh, is kind of part of the part of the deal.
I could go with a little thicker wire, but the, the, the adhesive here is so thin, this is my preferred wire of choice. As you can see, I'll be able to work the wire up and around the top of the display. You can kind of see the wave there as I move across all the way to the final corner. And then I'm going to pass the wire under one last time just to make sure it has completely separated before lifting. As you can see, there's a section of the adhesive that I was able to remove that stayed on the glass. But for the most part, I'm going to have to clean up the display. There are a couple ways to do this. I'm just going to show you the method that doesn't involve using a whole lot of chemicals to loosen the adhesive or anything. It's simply by rubbing the adhesive off. Or if you're lucky, you can actually pull at the adhesive. And if you continue to pull uh, gently, you should be able to remove uh, the entire thing, if not just small chunks, um, one at a time. Also using a little bit of um, acetone will help, or alcohol, but uh, basically uh, I'm going to basically pull off all of the adhesive that I can, or roll it off if I need to, on this particular display. Here you can see how flexible these displays are once the glasses are off. That was one of the questions that I was asked is how flexible are they? They're fa fairly flexible. So I'm excited to see uh, what happens with this in the future. All right, the last thing that we're gonna do is just test it once, one more time, uh, just to make sure that in the removal of the, of the, uh, the adhesive, we didn't do any uh, more damage in the remove of the glass. We'll clean it up a little bit here. I'll clean it up a lot more before I get it shipped off, but let's go ahead and test it. Looks like the touch is working. All of the buttons should be good to go. So there you go. Uh, that's how to remove the glass on the iPhone 11 Max Pro. Um, it's a uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a difficult process as you've seen. Um, I am leaving it like this. This is how the customer wanted it, um, and uh, this is how they're gonna, this is how they're gonna get it back. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more for not only the thumbnail, but uh, so that when the customer gets it, they they like the the look and everything. But uh, if you like this video, smash that like button, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video.